to Mr. John Clark. John, Johnny how C. are you? Good to are see you. Are you dry yet? Are you thawed out yet from yesterday? I mean, everybody had to take a hot shower after that. <laughs> I, know, I was finding all the space heaters in the house. Like, yeah. poor A.J. Brown, literally shivering at his locker. Yeah, you saw his lip too. quivering, and he's like, guys, I'm sorry I'm shaking. You yeah. don't realize because you're out there for four hours. Well, it's freezing. Uh, this not a, this not a, what you would call cold weather just yet. Well, he know, said he's from the south. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. and, I'm not used to it. and he's. I would think it's fair to say he's in great shape. Probably doesn't have a ton of body fat. Right, right. right. Well, he's better. So. Get, he better get used to it because it's about to get cold in a sec. Devontae yeah. must have been really cold then. Right. Oh, no skinny Batman, I'm yeah. sure, was quaking himself. <laughs> all right, John, we got to ask because, of course, we all know the only undefeated team now still in the NFL. Are you getting that kind of special vibe about this team that, you know, maybe we've felt before about teams not yeah. so long ago? I mean, you don't want to jump to that, but right. they're playing dreams and nightmares. Meek Mill in the locker room afterwards, and you just get a sense they all love playing together, too. No question. And yeah. how Slay comes up with a nickname for all the receivers, and then they all have fun with that as a team. So you see the camaraderie. Uh, you see they're all together. And then you're seeing what they do on the field. I mean, Five takeaways for the first time since the Super Bowl season and the amount of points they're putting up every game four times in a row. 24 or more points for the yeah, first time yeah. since when? Exactly. 2017. Yeah, and, and it's kind of interesting because that was the second year of Doug. This is the second year of Nick. The quarterback, second year of Carson Wentz, second year of Jalen Hurts. They're taking a leap, and they've got so much talent on this team. So, yes, I am I am getting the good vibes. I, I love when all of us in the media find those parallels where we're like second year, second year, you know, so uh -huh. on and so forth. Dog mask, Batman. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there yeah, you go. they've each got their, <laughs> their theme here. Barrett, I got to ask, what are you feeling when it comes to this team? What are you seeing from a former player's perspective, more importantly? I, I'm looking more so at the fundamentals of what, they, what they're going out there and playing. You know, they don't worry about what's going on on the other side of the field. They just worry about in-house stuff. Are they going out and they're playing as hard as they can play? Are they going out and making sure they're crossing their T's and dotting their I's? Are they playing fundamentally sound? That's exactly what they're doing. So that's why they can go into a game and not really worry about adverse weather conditions. They don't have to worry about the play selection because they're going to do what they do best and they're going to be fundamentally sound when they do it. So that's what's making this team play, you know, probably more consistent than anybody in the NFL because they're going out and they're accomplishing whatever directive they are trying to do. They do it and, and that's why there's been so successful. All right, so we got to touch on the fact that the Eagles, they spoiled Doug Peterson's return to Philly, but the scene on the field afterwards, John, it was it was really cool to see. I know Jason Kelsey does the jersey swap, but swapping for the jacket with Doug <laughs> Peterson, it was nice to see Doug get this reception. Yeah, I tell you, and when Doug was introduced, we were up there in the press box. You saw the link give him a standing ovation, and they cheered. And Doug, after the game, you saw the love. And I love what Jalen Hurts said to Doug. Jalen said... You're the reason why I'm here. Mm -hmm. You took a chance on me. And, and Doug was involved with building him as Absolutely. a player and yes. growing him as a player. And Doug said, I wanted to tell you how proud I am of you as a leader and what you become. But it is really cool. Jason Kelsey and the Eagles are kind of on that reunion tour. Mm -hmm. So Jason Kelsey gets Carson Wentz's jersey from last week that had a lot of green grass on it. <laughs> right. He was on the ground a lot. And then he gets Doug's rain jacket, which was really cool. And then Zach Ertz, maybe he'll get something from Zach Ertz. It's not a revenge tour. Or it's a reunion tour. And, oh, no question. Yes, yes. And Bo Allen and Chris Long were in the house on Sunday yeah. as well. So it's, there's... It was magical. Uh, more magical, yes. Do you think yes. that nostalgia kind of, like, coaxes that good feeling, that special feeling in these Well, guys, I, I think you, you're feeling that more so in the locker room and the way this team is put together. You know, they, they really love being around each other. They're tighter than just about any team I've been around. And that's what you need as far as a team that's a championship team. I know what it is because I've felt that type of camaraderie, that tightness together. You know, guys don't mind being in practice and being around each other. They go out and practice hard, and then they go out and they're still around each other. They're not in a hurry to get home all the time. This is a special team because the you know the close knit family that they become. John, I sit next to you in the press box at these home games. I know you're on it. You're all over the social media, both sharing information and gathering the information. Gotta we got a couple of items. <laughs> gotta reach the kids. Better, yeah. I mean, you reach my friends better than I do, and I have their phone number. A uh, couple of items to get to here. First off, along those lines, we mentioned it instead of the jersey swap. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool to see Jason Kelsey. I gotta think it was Kelsey's idea here to be like, hey. 
can I get your jacket? I personally would have gone for the hat. I'm, I really wish I was wearing a <laughs> visor, would have really been on brand. But it's cool to see that from Jason Kelsey. Yeah, and, and Jason literally, I mean, he frames all of these jerseys that he's getting. And Jason is going to be 35 coming up here during this season. Why didn't I do the same thing, you know? I mean, I know, I'm know. i a day late and a dollar short. I didn't do that. Towards the end of my career, I started thinking, man, I started getting these autographs. And I got an autograph from, uh, you know, Jerry Rice, you know. And that, once I started towards the end of my career, and, uh, I mean, I just thought of it just way too late. I know. Well, it, it wasn't a thing. The no. jersey swap wasn't yeah, a thing was, until... Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Sorry, I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to put a thing on I was, the time. Yeah, I mean, so. come on, man. I mean, Speaking of reaching the leather kids, helmets really and all that stuff when I play. <laughs> Agent Barrett over here. <laughs> all right. Uh, we also want to talk about A.J. Brown responding to the critics of his effort on the pick six. Said he was simply trying to force a fumble, and then he got blocked. He used a SpongeBob gif to... Uh, to ask for forgiveness. It's, it's kind of nice to be able to be this funny, a little bit self-deprecating because of all the success this team's enjoying right now. Yeah, and look, when you look at it, it doesn't look good. It looks like he wasn't m trying to make a tackle. Right, right, right. That's right. the way it looked to me. Now, he had a, he had a, I, I, that was only up there for a second, but uh, he did have an explanation. Yes. Yeah. Okay, look, AJ is a beast. Right. I mean, you know, he will go fight for any football. You would have liked to have seen him make a tackle there. Jordan Mailata, you saw what he did trying to make a tackle, and he hurt his shoulder. Yeah. Fully stretched out, diving, trying to make a tackle. And I think the flip side of that, and Barry, you can tell me if I'm wrong here, we all want to see AJ and the effort, and I know he explains the effort there, but then sometimes when these guys fully lay out, you're also bracing for impact that's just like, you know what, just respond on the offensive side of the ball. Don't get yourself hurt. Right, I mean, even though, even if you think of it being a business decision, you know, he didn't make it happen, but then he has a know with all to say, look, you know, my fault, you know, I, you know, it won't happen again. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Please forgive me. You know, A.J. Brown gets it. He understands this, this Philadelphia fan base now. So, I mean, it's kudos to him. You know, you get max effort from him all the time. You know, it, it happens sometimes. Yeah, we're all human. All right. And finally, speaking of being human, we got Britton Covey in the locker room on Instagram Live. <laughs> which, you know, wouldn't advise doing all the time. They're blasting the 2017 anthem Dreams and Nightmares, which John alluded to earlier. John, you think it's good to hearken back to that specific yesteryear, or do they, do they maybe need to find a, a new song? What's your take? Well, you know what? It'd be an interesting call to figure out who decided to play it. Oh, yeah. Because if it was one of the young guys yes. who wasn't on that team, and he's like, I love this song, wow. Then you've got those vibes organically and naturally. Now, if it was one of the veterans saying, let's let's get this song going again, all right, maybe you do need a new song, but it got me kind of pumped up. No, cool. well, I mean, you know, they, you hear that song. Those guys have the phone, go, hey, hey, Meek, let's get a new one. You know, that's all they yeah. need to do. Meek, let's get a new anthem. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure, sure it's done. Do it, yeah. If you asked Meek for a new anthem, I'm sure he would have one on, like, SoundCloud or Spotify no question. Yeah. tomorrow <laughs> for this specific evening. And he was at Villanova's Hoops Madness to kick off their season, so, yeah. So he's reachable, guys. All I don't right. know if Britton Covey knew that this would <laughs> blow up in Philly coming from Utah. I mean, the Mormon missile never missed. There we go. All right. John Clark, thank you very much for joining us. Good seeing you.